Overhead pressing, we want to make sure somebody is clear before we go overhead. So we're going to use shoulder mobility and a couple other just body features we're looking for. Rib cage position, pelvic position as we go overhead to make sure you got adequate stability and mobility to get there before we train the pattern. So I want to make sure we clear our mobility first. So let's go ahead and go through a reach back, Steve. We're going to go down into a quadruped position. This is going to really help extension and rotation of the T-spine. So we're just going to go from the forearm. He's going to get into the lumbar lock position, sitting as far back. There we go, into the heels as he can. This helps keep the lumbar completely locked. Let's take the elbow down. So he's going to breathe in. And then I want him to exhale, and he's going to extend and rotate through the spine, breathe in, and make sure you can tie your breath into this. If you end up getting three quarters of the way and the breath, ah, 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 you almost start choking, that's basically a little too far. We want to make sure you can have a good smooth breath. We would check both sides for symmetry. We want to make sure both sides are symmetrical before we really surpass and move out of that. After we get that, we're going to go into a forearm wall slide. Just go ahead, use the wall here, Steve. This is where we can really start to analyze basically pelvic position and rib cage position here. So he's going to be roughly two, three inches from the wall. We want to make sure he's able to get into this good position. A lot of the times you'll start to see anterior pelvic tilt. And usually with that, you'll see the rib cage flare at the same time. So a lot of the times you're going to get both at the same time. So look at the hips, look at the ribs, maintain good spine posture, good posture now. I want you to slide those forearms up. And now what he's going to do is lean into the wall so his chest is in the wall. And then he's going to drive the arms back. Let's just go through two more reps of that, Steve. Good. Rib cage position is good. Hip position is good. He's able to drive into the wall without losing any position as he pulls the arms back into a good position that we're going to start to train the pattern. Now we're going to actually see if Steve can stabilize and hold some weight in the overhead position. We're just going to do a waiter hold at the top. So let's go ahead, use the legs, help get it up to the top. And now I just want to make sure Steve is able to hold this position. I like to stand. If he can hold this, then I like to see him take it for a walk. And be able to stabilize and control. A lot of the time you're going to see muscles twitching, firing in this right shoulder, which that's okay as long as he's able to maintain control of the bell. That's basically the muscles learning what's going on with that weight in the overhead position. Go ahead, bring that down, Steve. Now Steve has shown that he's been able to actually hold a load overhead while maintaining good pelvic and rib cage position. Since he's able to do that, let's go ahead and train the pattern. So now we're going to actually take him through a front press. So we've just got a single kettlebell up in the rack position. Let's go ahead and take that through a front press. So you're going to, again, maintain pelvic position, rib cage position. And as, you, as Steve presses up, notice how he presses up and it almost drives back. He uses that offset center of gravity with the kettlebell to let that bell kind of pull down, let the scapula retract and depress as the shoulder stays nice and stable. And that's going to be our single arm front press. That's how we build it up, ensure we got stability, and then train the pattern. So that's how we build the foundation on our overhead pressing movements.